And we're back and you're listening to the Calgary Metal Fest pre-fest broadcast. Tonight we're playing plenty of metal from the fest as well as a few interviews. And right now we have with us yet another legend. We have Mr. Dave Carlo of Razor. Welcome to the show, Dave. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Now, Dave, Razor's been around for like dare I say, (laughs) some 30-odd years or so. Tell us a little bit about the early days of forming the band back in the 80s and what the journey's been like over the years. Okay. Uh, Well, the band was formed in late 1983. So we're talking about 33 years now. (laughs) Uh, It was formed by myself and Mike Campanola, the bass player. And what happened was... uh, in a previous band, um, well, Mike and I have been friends since high school, and I actually knew him growing up from a very early age. And uh, I was a bass player, and I had a couple of bands that I had been in that Mike was aware of, and Mike was also a bass player. So he, when he discovered that I was uh, looking to start a new band, he persuaded me to switch to guitar. <laughs> he wanted to play bass for my next band, so he... He talked me into it, so I switched to guitar, and actually that was in 1983, so it wasn't, uh, I wasn't playing guitar uh, that long when I started Razor, Um, but I knew how to play the guitar. I mean, I've been playing bass for five or six years. Right. So uh, we we formed the band then, and we uh, we had a a mutual friend, Mike Embro, our drummer, who had also been in other bands with me in the past, and so we put it together from there. So you're just learning how to play guitar, and you're already pumping out the albums. Right. Well, I think... (laughs) You know, I'm, I'm learning, but I'm I'm playing it as a as my primary instrument. I mean, I wrote music before, and I did sure. play before, but it was uh, you know I was more of just a rhythm guitarist. I had to really learn lead in a hurry. Okay, I so think you knew how to play anyways, and you know, throughout your career, like I said from the very beginning, you know, you guys were pumping out the albums one after the one after the other, all the way up to like your your last release in 1997 decibels why did you guys kind of like stop there okay so let me give you a bit of a a background on that okay Um, what really happened was we made an ep in 1984 Mm -hmm. um then we released a full-length album at the beginning of 1985 then we released a second full-length album at the end of 1985 (laughs) <laughs> then from there, it was pretty much one release a year. We did one in 86, one in 87, mm-hmm. one in 88, then one in 1990, one in 1991. Then I dissolved the band in 1992, and that was it. We were done. I came back to do one album five years later because my singer, who had sung with me in the last part of our career in the 80s, um, lined up a deal and a distribution arrangement and I'd had written the Razor album that was supposed to be the 1992 release, but I decided to give up the band at that point. Uh, so we just came back and we recorded that material in 1997. So the band wasn't really a going concern then. We we had stopped in 1992. I came back and did one album, and then we did a couple of festival appearances in the late 1990s, and that was about where we were. And then um, what happened moving forward was, because of social media and because of that type of exposure, there just became a wave of interest to in the band, so we started getting offers to do shows, and that's kind of taken us to where we are today. So at least now you're doing them for fun. Absolutely. I mean, to be honest with you, anything after 1992 would be considered for fun. Even the, the, the reunion album in 1997 was more for fun than for anything from my viewpoint. Mm-hmm. And like you said, you've been doing some you know shows here and there, some Cool shows, uh, Dave. Uh, you did a show in Japan? Yeah, we went to Japan in uh, 2011, and we actually recorded a live album there that's coming out probably sometime in the next two months. Oh, wow. Well, that'll be awesome. And then last year you did Maryland Death Fest. This year you're doing, of course, uh, the Calgary Fest. You're doing a fest out in, in um, California. So you get to do some traveling. You have fun playing with your band. And you don't have the same, you know, stresses like you were saying before. You were pumping out albums two, two in one year, every other year. You're trying to get albums done. You're trying to tour. You're trying to do all this stuff. And like, like you, you know, you're doing all the writing. You're doing all this work. So now you kind of, you know, you get to relax a little and actually enjoy yourself up there. 
Yeah, it's nice that we uh, we aren't really touring anymore. We're just making uh, mostly festival appearances, and uh, certainly uh, it's a situation where we can pick and choose the ones we want to play. And uh, yeah, so it's been it's been a lot of fun. Well, it's got to be kind of nice to be still asked. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> After all these years, you, us? That'd be awesome. Okay. Well, I'm surprised <laughs> about it, to be honest. Um, but, you know, we didn't anticipate, uh, you know, when we were in our 20s, uh, 30 years ago, we didn't anticipate that anybody would care at all now. But, you know, it's it's the social media. It's the explosion of the Internet and everything, and it's just a lot easier to uh, to get exposure uh, for our music, and that's what's, that's what's caused it. And, and you know what I like, too, Dave, which which is one of the nice things about social media, is that a lot of younger people are just discovering you guys, so they're excited to go and see you. And you know, the, you're this old school band, and, and these these kids, and now they get to see you at these festivals that you've been invited to that they wouldn't, you know, normally get to see you at. So it's it's got its good points, you know. I think a lot of the uh, people that we see at these festivals are younger people that have just gotten into the band. It's awesome. I, mm-hmm. I, I love it. Uh, we have a younger drummer. We we have a guy who's only 27 years old on the drums, and uh, he's done quite a bit as far as um, you know. Just he's he's busy all the time on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. He's networking all the time, and I think he's uh, he's done a lot to uh, to promote the band too. So yeah, we see a lot of younger people uh, coming to the shows. It's awesome. Okay, so you know what? Before we get into talking about the festival a little bit, why don't you tell us the lineup of the band now? What's the current lineup? Yeah, so what we have now is myself. So I'm the uh, the, the original member, but we also have the original bass player, Mike Campanolo. So he and I are working together. We have uh, vocalist is Bob Reed. He's been in the band since 1988. And it's funny because people still call him the new guy. You know, <laughs> the band's, you know, like 30 years almost. And uh, then we have our Ryder Johnson is our drummer, and he's, uh, like I said, 27 years old. He's been working with us since 2014. Okay, so you guys are going to be appearing at the Calgary Metal Fest, a historic lineup. you got Annihilate, Annihilator, Exciter, You Guys, Sacrifice, sharing the stage on the headlining night of September 17th at Flame Central. Uh, never... All you guys have never been on the same bill together in Canada. Are you kind of excited for this one? Yeah, it's fantastic. These guys, all these bands are friends of mine, and uh, I've played with all of them, and to get them all together in one place is just amazing, and, you know, who would have predicted it? It's it's going to be an amazing event. And, and it took 30 years to get you all together at the same event. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's it's really uh, unprecedented. Um, you know, and, and, and the thing is, is... Um, what a lineup. I mean, it's, you know, if you're familiar with the history of the four bands, to, to be able to see all four of them in one night, that's just like an unbelievable, unbelievable opportunity as far as, as far as I can t- I tell you. I mean, speaking for myself, if even if Razor wasn't playing there, I mean, just to see those other three bands, uh, what, a, what a great night that would be. Oh, it is. I mean, we were really excited. Of course, it's kind of far from me, but boy, what a treat. And who? Kn- and it'll probably never happen again either, you know, at this point. So people... Uh, there's a chance it might not. I mean, um, if it's really successful, sometimes these things uh, create momentum, right? If you do want well, nice. to well, then somebody else might want to. But right now, we, we, don't, uh, we don't have any other plans for anything like that. So it might be the only time. So it's got to be nice to play in, you know, your own country. What are the crowds like at these Canadian shows? I mean, especially this one with all you great Canadian bands there. I mean, is it is the the energy different when you're playing for, you know, your, your home country as compared to other places? I'll, I'll tell you what I notice. Okay. Um, from doing all these shows I've been playing the last couple of years, too, is that North American audiences are very similar. So American and Canadian audiences are very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, European audiences are, are a little bit different. And I don't mean, and they're all fantastic. I love playing anywhere. But what I do notice is, is that uh, sometimes with us, we're, the kind of vibe that we put across when we're on stage, it's pretty... It's pretty loose. It's pretty lighthearted. Like we're our music is very intense and mm-hmm. very angry and very mm-hmm. powerful. So our persona on stage isn't like that. We're kind of laid back and a little bit humorous. North Americans get that a lot more. I think they they they, they understand our sense of humor. 
and they respond very well to the on-stage talk and that kind of thing. Uh, I'm not saying that it doesn't go over well in Europe, but sometimes we've read reviews of performances in Europe, and uh, some of the people that have reviewed our shows have said things like, oh, you know, it would be really nice if they didn't talk as much. <laughs> So it just depends, but in North America they seem to appreciate the talking more, and uh, that would be the, the biggest difference. But as far as response to the music, it's it's the same. It's your universal language, right? The universal of course, language. of course, <laughs> of course. Now, how long is your set going to be at the uh, Calgary Fest? I think we're doing about an hour. Um, oh, wow! But, I mean, there's 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 again, it's it's a full night, and I I'm I'm not sure how everything else is working out, um, but I think we're we're we got down for about an hour. Um, we probably are going to be the first of the four bands on. I don't know that for a fact, but mm -hmm. um, I suspect that because our singer has to fly out of Calgary at midnight uh. on the second night. He's got to be somewhere else, so we have to head to the airport. Um, not all of us, but he does, so that's probably going to put us at the beginning of the show. Now, are you going to guys going to be bringing some uh, merch with you and stuff? Uh... Probably. I have to discuss that with the promoter and see what he's planning to do. I know he's got festival uh, merchandise he's going to sell that's got the logos of all the bands on it. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to talk to him about it and see what he wants us to do. If he wants us to bring some, I will bring some. <laughs> now, okay, so where can people go to learn more about the band, what's going on, if you're bringing some merch to the show and that kind of thing? What sites you got out there? Yeah, well, I think the place to go to learn about what we're up to and what we're doing is our website, RazorBand.com. So that's RazorBand, R-A-Z-Z, we're talking to Americans, so I can remember that. <laughs> so it's R-A-Z-O-R-B-A-N-D.com. And uh, as far as, and I have a Twitter account, too, that if you just type in Dave Carlo Razor, all one word, you will, it'll, it'll link you right to my Twitter page on Google. So you can see that. I always uh, put out the latest things that's, that are going on as far as show announcements or anything that might be particular to one show. So that's another place to look. And, of course, Calgary Metal Fest has a website as well. So um, I think if you just type Calgary Metal Fest into Google, you'll, you'll get information there too. All right, great. Well, so then people could go to those sites to find out what's going on with you. They could go to the Calgary site to find out more information about the fest. Of course, we're talking about it a lot on tonight's show as well. And Dave, thank you for coming on the show to tell us a little bit about the band and what's going on with you guys and have fun at this year's fest. Thank you very much. We'll look forward to seeing everybody there.